Okay, so I went boating for two weeks around Mallorca on this boat, but I didn't do it by myself. I went with my family. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, so I get a few complaints saying that we don't do enough boat driving. So today, we're doing some boat driving. And this is the um, 2017 Princess V58, fitted with the D13 900 horsepower times two. And we are just sailing from Calador to Andrax in Mallorca with the family. And if you have a look behind, you'll see it's quite pretty. Yeah, we're doing about 21.5 knots. So I thought it'd be a good time to show you a little bit more about the dashboard on these boats so you can get an idea of how easy it is to drive. It's so easy to drive that even I can do it that's how easy it is. So if you come a bit closer and we'll start going through the dashboard. Okay, so we're gonna go through the switches first. So let's go and have a look at the switches. So this button here is the anchor windlass on the bow. That does the anchor. And it's got a little safety button. Can you see that little safety button? I won't press it now. We slide that and that lets you use the switch. This here is the sunroof. Actually, we can demonstrate that. Let's demonstrate that. There it goes. But it's quite hot today, so I think we'll leave it there. This little button here is your map reading light, which turns on that little red light there. Can you see it? But we don't use maps anymore, but it puts a nice glow at night. These are your nav lights, which I'm not turning on because it's quite bright. And then here you've got one, two, and three bilge pumps. So you just press them on, see a little red light comes on, and they beep if they're out. So we've probably got some water in there at the moment. So let's shoot that out. Get rid of that. That's that. Then here we've got the windscreen wipers. They're nothing like as good as you get on cars. So you press the buttons down, it squirts, oh, I say it squirts some water that way around. See it squirts in the water on the wipers? and then it squirts some water on the screen and then we let go of that and they might stop, they might not they just do whatever they want literally look and they might stop in a second then we have this is a little search light on the roof which I don't really use uh, but you turn it on and off and you can turn it around on that this is your multi-point display which I've got today showing the depth but you can have it showing um, speed and other useless information like the sea temperature is 28 degrees um, anyway we'll put that back to depth I like it on depth that one and then here we got the bow thruster you have to press both the buttons on to turn it on so you don't accidentally turn it on but we're not going to be doing that because we're doing 21 knots. Then over on the plotter here, let me press that button, that centres it. There's our boat there near the beach. There's the beach, have a look at the beach. It's not that near to the beach. Palmer's that way. And here you've got your, um, your vector position. If you ever need to give that to the emergency services. You've got speed over ground, so we're up to 22 knots. Uh, depth and what have you. You can also press some buttons here and have different um, screens there. Fish finder, radar, data, d d dual chart. That's sometimes useful. So look at that. So you can zoom in on one. It's not on dual chart and then I can have this one. But there's Mallorca. 
we're going around here. So we're leaving from here and we're going around to here. So we'll use that because that's quite nice. Then over here, a lot of you have been asking a lot of questions about this. So this here is your average fuel consumption. And here's the instant. Now we're doing 22 knots. So we're doing 185 liters per hour. Now, if I give it some more welly, look on the throttles here. Everyone all right? I'm just going to give it some more welly. Yeah? Right, here we go. Oh, pick that up down there, will you, Max? Right, so we're now doing 2,000 revs. Because a lot of you don't believe my fuel figures. So, if you look at the speed now, we're now doing 30 knots, 31 knots. But look at the fuel consumption. We've gone up to... 330 litres per hour per hour but we are now doing 33 knots anyway that's far too fast let's pull that back it feels like we're going to take off let me just slow it down using these very complicated throttles let's go back down to 21 knots otherwise Mrs B might fly off the back we don't want that. Well, not yet. So let's slow down. Okay. There we're down to 21 knots. Got to feel slow, doesn't it? Okay. Here's our fuel, and we are full up. The red one is what it thinks it's got, and the green one is probably what it's got. But this is quite accurate compared to most fuel gauges on boats. This is your coolant temperature. We've got our RPM here, and we've got our RPM here also on these um, other gauges, which are the manual gauges. And you can also see this boat's done 460 hours, which is not a lot. We said we need to go a bit faster. Let's go a bit faster. We said, where's the throttles there, right? 21 knots, that's better. Okay, then we're gonna do the switches over here. So we've got some more nav lights, these are all lights in here, we've got a horn and we've got two electric windows, that's a blank. There's one electric window and there is the other electric window. And then here we have the auto fire system, this is my autopilot. So I'm at 304 degrees which matches with the compass, so if I want to go to let's have a look I actually probably want to go a bit more left so I'm going to go to 300 degrees just twitch that knob and the bow will turn slightly and the compass will go to 300 you can see how complicated it is and then here are the ignitions you um, you turn the ignition buttons on green and then you press the start buttons and they're turned on with these fobs, they're keyless, so I just leave those in there, out of the way. And um, that's basically how that works. Now here's your trim tabs. So trim tabs, uh, basically, I've got half tabs down. So if I press up, the bow will go up. Press bow down, and the bow will go down look do that again look bow up watch press the bow go up see it go up now press the bow down get a few seconds bow down so I've got them about half at the moment and then here is my VHF which is on channel 9 contrary to what some of you think I do actually use it so um, I'm not going to use it now but you press this button we call the marinas on number nine and the protocol is you call the marina, you say the marina's name, you say the boat name, you ask your instruction and then they answer you back. It's all very polite. So we will get back to cruising and have a little look out the back. We'll end with a little back shot. Okay, so we now arrived at Andrax and I'm going to uh, use the VHF. So let's give it a go. I'm on channel 9. The 
Okay, so Port Andrax, Port Andrax, this is Bunas over Bunas. Yeah, hello Port Andrax. We have um, a visitor's berth arranged for tonight. We're a Princess V58 and the name is um, uh, Bunas and we're just coming into the harbour. You can repeat the name of the boat please, over. Yeah, name of the boat is Buenas. Buenas. Give me one second, please, over. Okay. So while we're waiting for him to reply, we're just putting some fenders out. Jake's doing that side. And then if you look for the windscreen, you can see Andrax. Oh, it's a bit rough, is it? Someone's just gone past. Oopsie daisy. Jake's fallen over. Uh, I need to confirm how many meters is the boat, sailor motor over? Um, how many meters is it? Or oh, 10 would be 33, 58. Buna, Buna, they got the villa over. Yeah, um, yeah, hello, Bunas, we're 58 feet. So about 18 meters, isn't it? About 18 meters. For one night, motorboat for one night, is correct, over? Yes, correct, one night, over. Yes, go to the second key, the new one in the center of the port. You have a marinero in this area waiting, follow the instructions, please, over. Okay, Port Andrax, all understood, thank you, over. That's it, see? So we can now berth the boat. So we've had a nice evening in Andrax, beautiful place. Love the curry restaurant there. And now we're gonna blast off up to Palenza, ground past Sola and, um, and the big rock there. So let's go do it. And now we're off to Porta Colom and I'm going to show you some uh, manoeuvres to show you how easy it is to drive this boat. So let's do it. for a second you can just take it all in just have to make sure I don't hit my thing if I just go ahead okay so I'm going to show you a little trick that all boaters use to turn on the spot so I put if you stand up a little bit so just so you can get a bit of the can you see the background yeah so I'm going to put that one ahead See that throttle and that one is stern. And the boat is now, if I'm careful, it's gonna turn on the spot. Look at that, is it turning? Yeah. Yeah, it's turning, keep the camera in the same place. So there's the entrance to the harbour. I've just got to make sure that I don't hit anyone. But I'm just doing a 360 for you. Look, I'm, look how easy this is. You can't do this in a car, can you? If I want to go faster that way, I'll just get a bit more revs, look. Or if I want to go 
go past that one, get a bit more revs. No, I'm not touching the steering wheel. Oh, we're still going round. And round and round and round we go. We could get dizzy so far. Put that one in neutral. And that one in neutral. Those, back, those people on that boat are wondering what we're doing. Now. I think we're crazy English. Okay, so that's enough playing about. So um, let's complete the circumnavigation of the island and blast back now to the home port of Calador. Now I want to show you everything in detail around this lovely model. Okay. So on the transom of the V58, we have the Hilo platform, which I've demonstrated in other videos. You've got this lovely garage, which takes a Williams 325, which we have got in there. And we've got this lovely sun pad, which I will actually demonstrate. It is really comfy. So we've got loads of space. So this boat's really designed for outside fun. If you come aboard and here we have a crew cabin, which you wouldn't ever want to stay in. And I've been using it for the windscreen covers and the aft covers, but look, you have got a sink and there is a toilet in there somewhere. But anyway, we're going to spend not much time in there because it's awful. It's very useful as a store though. By the way, yes, I am sweating. Yes, my shirt is soaking wet, but it is very warm. So into the cockpit here, and we have all this lovely um, U-shaped seating. And under here we have a barbecue and we have a bin and we have got a store cupboard full of junk but this has got a really nice fridge here which is really good for big bottles of drink this table folds over like so but my favorite bit about the cockpit is the electric sunshade now before i show it to you folding in where would you put the switch for that sunshade you might put it here you might put it here but you wouldn't put it here would you? This is where the sunshade is. Anyway, there's it folding in. If you go and just zoom it out so they can see from the other way. And you can see it's a really nice sunshade with a stainless steel frame. So I'm gonna put that away with the button being inside the saloon. Strange place to put a button. Anyway, on our travels, we have found that this boat is absolutely perfect for cruising with a family of five. Although there is three cabins and it will sleep six. Okay, so this is the saloon and I didn't think I was going to use it much on the holiday, but we used it loads. And the reason we used it loads is because it's got this big glass door, which you pull this button here. It's manual, by the way. Just step back a bit so we can get an idea. And it shuts like this. And it means I'm at 16 degrees in here and you're out there at 30 degrees. And I've got this really good curtain which stops prying eyes from the shore looking at me while I'm on the boat. So this worked really, really well. And the children who are 11, 13, and 15 slobbed around this area a lot of the time. Now, the boat has got a Hilo TV, which is here, but we never used it. Because I think if you go on a boating holiday for two or three weeks and you're watching TV, you're a saddo. Because you're in a beautiful boat, in a beautiful marina, cruising around Mallorca, which is what we did. So we didn't use that. However, we did use the Fusion. And that sounds fantastic. There's speakers everywhere, like here, there, and we loved that. So all in all, I loved the saloon. I've done a separate video 
on the dashboard, which you'll see. And it's got a lot of natural light here. It's really, really nice. Now, you'll see these extension leads and we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, but that was one of the things that I think need improving Princess. You may have improved it on the later ones, but on this one, this 2017, you didn't. So let's go down below and I'll try and walk now. I won't walk backwards because I will fall over. So here's the galley. So let's shut this door here. That goes to the master cabin. Here's the galley. Cutlery, good place, loved it. Um, we've got some plug sockets here and here, which worked well. We put some food in there, that worked well. We put water in there. The fridge, I love. And you can have a look what we've got in the fridge, because it's just interesting. We had some beers, we've got some ham, some, don't you love this President cheese? I love this President cheese. Got some uh, vodka, didn't really drink much of that. And the kids like these Actimel kids, which went down really well. So the fridge is so cold. Oh, it's lovely. Freezer, we used that for a bit of ice, but not really. Sink and all these cupboards we filled up with things like Frosties. Um, the plates were a bit of a pain because they were in here. We didn't really eat much of the boat. We had breakfast, but they're all very nice. You see those? And look, they're made in Limoges, France. Top quality. So that was all good. Um, this dinette we found to be pretty pointless, I'll be honest. Uh, we just used it for putting bags and books on, really. Uh, I do like these, though. They're beautifully made. Oh, there's one thing I forgot about the saloon. Follow me up to the saloon a second. I want to point this out to everyone because it just shows... Look how beautiful this air conditioning vent is. Now, most boat manufacturers would do a flat piece of wood here and put a black grill down there, but Princess have painstakingly made this air condition vent and that one out of wood. Now, I've seen these being made at the factory and it takes hours and hours of work, but I thought I would show it to you just to show that you get what you pay for and a princess is beautifully built. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the master cabin and remember I've stayed two or so weeks in here with Mrs. B and it was very comfortable. Uh, our air conditioner broke, so we left the door open to let cold air in, but it's actually quite a nice space. Um, there's obviously a sock sofa, which is quite nice, but Mrs. B was on this side, so she had it full up with all her things. So I didn't get to use the sock sofa, which is a bit of a shame. But here's my first big complaint, Mr. Princess. This is a one million pound boat. We have got nowhere to charge our phone here. We've got nowhere to charge our phone here. And where do you think the plug socket is on this cabin? You will never guess. It's down here. Look, it's down here under the bed. So we had to run extension leads to the side of the bed, either side. Now, admittedly, this is an easy fix and we have fixed it for customers buying this boat, but it's just a silly mistake. You've got to have power beside your bed. Everyone's got a phone. If they haven't got a phone, they've got a tablet. And if they haven't got a tablet, well, everyone's got a tablet. Uh, wardrobes were great. Love those. No issues there. Do you want to have a look in the wardrobe? There's all our hangers. Very nice. And here, Mrs. B found a little makeup table with little lights, which she loved. So that is very, very good. So my second complaint in this cabin, remember I've been in it two weeks, so you get to know the boat pretty well, is the floor here. Step down, step down, that one gets you, that one gets you. Now if you're coming out the bathroom, 
you go one, two, three. So I think this could have been better designed and actually when I've sold these boats new I've spoke to some customers about just changing this design to make it just a little simpler. So again it's an easy fix, it's no big deal but I've got to tell you the good and the bad. Let's move on to the bathroom. Now the bathroom is quite it works it works just it's quite small for a master cabin i could dry by getting in the shower and doing this um i love all the storage loads oh i'll drop that down the toilet loads of storage the shower was great love the sinks as you can see i made a mess of the mirror it's a really good cabin now because of the V of the hull is here, if you just step back a bit, I found that while I was doing my bouffant hair in the morning, I would have to put my foot up here. Now it's no big deal, but you know, it's just all a little bit, tiny bit cramped. The other bathroom is perfect. So this is the bunk bed cabin coming down from the saloon and it's quite nice. Excuse the mess, but You've got a nice little bunk here with windows, reading light. Was there any power in here? Uh, not the no, we couldn't find any power in here. Got a little wardrobe here, which is quite nice. But what I do want to show you is the secret hatch. Now, when I showed you the last secret hatch on the Princess, one thing I forgot to point out is, if you pass me that, is every single wire on this boat, let's zoom in, is labelled. Can you see that? Each wire actually tells you what it does. So I thought you'd want to know that. There's a dashboard up there. Some graffiti up there. No, it's the boat number. Oh, Lee. What does he put? He's put his name. Lee. What was that? Lee Factory. Anyway, so I thought you'd like to see that. It's very, very well made. Okay, so going forward, we have the day head, which also has a Jack and Jill door to the forward cabin. And if you poke your head in there, this is a much better sized bathroom than the master head. So that worked well, the kids love that. Um, George and my eldest daughter stayed in there and the two boys stayed in here. They did about 50% fighting, 50% sleeping in that approximate ratio, but they had a great time in here. Again, we've got a problem with plug sockets. Do you want to see where the plug socket is? It's down there under the wardrobe, not by the bed like you'd hope it to be. But again, like I said, an easy fix, but really, really good in here, no problems. Okay, so after two weeks on board, I found the boat to be fantastic all round. But we did notice that the wee wee poo poo tank did fill up quite quickly. Now, what I do love is, can you see this button here? It says auto and manual. So if I press auto now, it, uh, why is that working then? Oh there, pump running. I'll press manual. See the green light running? That's now pumping out the wee and poo tank, which I'm not going to do any more of. But, and you've got this gauge here. Can you see the gauge? Low, empty, mid, full. So we had to keep a close eye on this because on day three, it got to full and I didn't notice. And there was a slight smell. Now this is what I love about Princess. If you follow me, I pulled up this carpet, yeah, see the carpet? I pulled up this lid, yeah, see? And can you see there, that is the waste tank. Now the waste tank is beautifully labeled. You read that? Forward cabin toilet to holding tank, holding tank, anyway, and there's the bilge at the bottom. So. All I did, I came down here, I had to pour some disinfectant over some of the pipes which had got a little bit under pressure. I won't go into more detail. The bilge was clean, but very quickly, because of how beautifully made the boat is, 
I was able to get to the holding tank, put some bleach over the offending pipe and get it sorted. So a big emergency was averted. Let me just put this back down. You can see how quick and easy it is. This is real time. That goes back down there. That goes back down there. And it's all good. I love that. That's brilliant. So, in summary, this 2017 V58 is a cracking boat. Three cabins, shaft drive, D13 900s. Hasn't got a Portuguese bow, that's why I haven't bothered showing it to you. Lovely sunbed, garage, high low, lovely galley. It, all in all, it's been a great two weeks boating. I showed you how much fuel it uses. It can use a lot or a little, depending on what you want to do. But I think if you've got the money, if you've got the money, then, and you want to do some boating in the sun, wherever that may be, then this boat has got to be on your shortlist. It just ticks so many boxes. And remember to tell your salesman, one, I need more plug sockets by all the beds, and two, can you please just have a look at that step outside the bathroom and see if you can do something for, for me. My brother will kill me. He'll say, why have you told them that? Because I've now got to put a step in. But I can't help it. I've just got to tell you it as it is. I only fell over two or three times. And I think I only had two or three beers. Ish. But apart from that, the boat is a winner.